Welcome to Ramos Mazes Int. Hope you're excited to wander the maze. As far as opening hand goes, yes, I love it. This is pretty much everything we want to see in our opening hand. The only thing that would make this better is if we had life from the loam. But uh, got Command Tower and Weathered Wayfarer. The only downside is uh, hopefully our opponent gets some ramp going because uh, if we're on the play, um, unfortunately, in that Weathered Wayfarer is not going to be so good because we're always going to be... Uh, for the most part, matched up on land drops. But anyway, yes, welcome to Ramos Mazes, and I hope you're excited to wander the maze as we find out stuff about ourselves. Uh, let's go ahead and get down... Get down Ancient Tomb. Do we want to go for something with Weathered Wayfair and not make the land drop? Because once we get down Ancient Tomb... And once we get down Ancient Tomb, it'll be just like we made the land drop anyway, because that'll be two mana. They get down the yeah, I guess, yeah, let's just go and get down Ancient Tomb. There's not much else that we can do. We'll just go and leave up Weathered Wayfair. Let's say that they do get some sort of ramp going, and then we go for that activation. But yes, we're playing Ramos, Dragon, Engine, Flying. Whenever you cast a spell, put a plus one counter on Ramos for each of that spell's colors. Then remove five plus one counters from Ramos. Add double Woobird to your mana pool. Activate this ability only once each turn. Playing gets Rune of the Hidden Realm. Uh, Vigilance and Tramble, and then for a 2 mana activation, exile another target creature, turn that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. And our opponent did get an extra lane on the battlefield, turning on this Weathered Wayfair, which is just beautiful. Thankfully, that did happen. Uh, let's get this popped out. Do we want to go for anything in particular? You know, let's go and grab Urborg. I think I like that. So we go for Urborg. That's going to allow us to start tapping down this Mana Confluence and Ancient Tomb uh, for a Black Source. And that way we don't really have to worry about uh, taking a ton of damage off of that. So we're now sitting at three lands. Yeah, let's go ahead and get down Urborg. Or after we're not going to worry about it. We'll get down Selesnya at Guildgate because there's not much else we can do. Uh, so we'll get down Guildgate and then we're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. I uh, hope they make the land drop that allows us to go for another way we uh, Weathered Wayfair activation. And we'll see exactly what we're going to grab. But yes, one of the fun things about Ramos, if you haven't seen this deck before, this is uh, Mazes Int. We're going for an alternative win condition. We have some other stuff in here, but uh, for the most part, this is just a, a five-color good stuff deck. It, it's fun. Well, not necessarily good stuff, but uh, we get to have some good stuff. That's, that's the main thing. It's a lot of fun. Now, we can go for Thespian Stage on Ancient Tomb. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 with Urborg. Let's just, yeah, we'll, we'll hold off on this. Let's just go and start grabbing some of our key pieces. You know, and that's one of the big things that we need to grab. Let's go and grab Mazes in. I feel that's going to be good. We get that in our hand. It's going to be able to come into play tap. That's going to allow us to get some good stuff going. So, you put it in our hand to shuffle our library. Okay, so let's go and get down Mazes End. Yeah, if we just hit a life from the low, man, this thing is just, oh, it's just excellent. Um, let's go and go for Gatekeeper Vine. Oh, dang, I meant to tap down a different way. That would be online for weather. Yes, we're going to use that ability. Let's get our land into our hand. Let's go and grab a, uh, I think it is it Gilgate. That way we have access to blue. And then we're going to go and pass. I meant to tap down Ancient Tomb to take a little bit extra damage to leave up the weather wafer. But unfortunately, I kind of mistapped on that one. But yes, as far as this deck goes, and this deck got a lot better uh, with the printing. Well, not a lot better. It got some really good key cards, I should say, uh, with the printing of Guilds of Ravnica. They added the Circuitous Route, I think that's how you say it, which is going to allow you to search your library for two gate cards, which is just absolutely what this deck wants to do. And they also printed um, a couple other Gate Matters cards and a brand new gate, too, which kind of increased the uh, the chances of running into some lands. Uh, let's go and get down Urborg. Yeah, that way we can kind of start tapping down the Ancient Tomb and stuff like that. So let's go double green. And this is going to be Chromatic and Lantern on top of our library. Splendid Reclamation, we're still looking at Eternal Witness. Yeah, let's just go and pass the turn. You know, we're looking at getting now Guildgate next turn, getting now potentially Mana Confluence. We're going to be drawing into Chromatic Lantern, which is going to turn all of our lands on for any sort of color. And then we can decide what we want to do with Merciless Eviction. Um, we'll also kind of see what sort of board state our opponent gets developed. But outside of the Mazes Inn with this particular deck, we've got some really good stuff in here. We have Torment of Hellfire. Uh, we have Villainous Wealth, which is always a ton of fun. We have Door to Nothingness. Because uh, basically this is just kind of like a Soul Tie ramp deck. Uh, that's what we're going for. I'm just going to go for Gilded Drake. Okay, let's see who they're going <laughs> to swap out on this one. More than likely, I was about to say, yeah, they grab Course of Crufix. So this will put us in a position of we're going for this Merciless Eviction. Exile all creatures will probably be worth it. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. So it's going to be six total lands. And then we're at one, two, three, four. So we can still get in a Weather Wayfair activation. 
because that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. And then, yeah, we can get out of mana conflict. So we can go for Weather Wayfarer activation, get an extra land on the battlefield, and then go for a Merciless Eviction. Um, exiling a lot of this stuff. It is a bummer to miss out on Corsair of Crew Fix, but unfortunately that's just kind of how it goes sometimes. Uh, let's go ahead and block with Gilded Drake on... Uh, actually, no, because we want to exile Gilded Drake. So we're going to let them go and get in for four. We have no reanimation, but we'll just go and throw Gatekeeper in front of it. That way it goes into our graveyard, and uh, once we exile Gilded Drake, that's going to allow us to uh, make sure that gets exiled. Alright, the opponent's going to go for exile another target creature. See what they go for. Gilded Drake, and that's going to return the battlefield at the next instep, so that'll still give him access to stealing one more of our creatures. And since I did kind of tap down funny, unfortunately that's going to leave us off of Weathered Wayfair, which is a little bit of a bummer, but we're going to stop that, uh, that root and enter the battlefield shenanigans from happening uh, once they keep getting down Gilded Loaded, uh, Gilded Drake. Alright, so we end up with Gilded Drake, who's just sitting at a 3-3. I was going to get on Mana Confluence, it's going to go for Merciless Eviction. Yeah, they can't go for that in response. Uh, they don't have enough mana, or it's tapped down, so let's go and tap down for us. Make sure we clicked on the right one. Exile all creatures. That, oh. If you were to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, actually we can just tap down for, we don't have to tap down Ancient Tomb. So we exile all creatures, that's going to be white, it's going to be black, and it doesn't really matter on the rest of them. Add black off of that, now we're not taking any sort of life. So we're going to exile all creatures, get rid of our creatures unfortunately. Uh, basically we're going to send our com opponent's commander back to the command zone and get rid of that Gilded Drake interaction, which is exactly what we want to get down. And once we get down, is it Guildgate next turn? That's going to put us online for Damia. And if things get a little bit nutty again, since we do have Eternal Witness, we can go for that Merciless Eviction back to our hand. And we'll probably end up going for that, because if we're playing against Rune into the battlefield creatures, um, it's probably going to get out of hand, I would assume. I haven't played against Rune in a long time, but as you can just, a little bit of flavoring that we got from Rune right there, uh, with Guild of Drake bouncing back and forth, that's... Uh, more than enough that we'll probably end up going for a turtle witness on Merciless Eviction just to get rid of any sort of uh, super fun stuff from our opponent. We'll make sure that we're the only ones having fun on our side of the battlefield. Alright, so we draw into Go Gary Gilgate. And unfortunately, those are two lands that will come into play tap, which is not going to allow us to actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that will allow us to get down Damia. I think that'd be a good option. Yeah, let's go for that. Uh, let's go for Damia. It's going to be one, two, Let's get down Damia, and let's go and get down Is It Guildgate. And the good thing about this with Damia, this is kind of, like I mentioned earlier, this is a Soul Tide Lands deck. You know, we do have Red Splash in here, but the actual core of the deck is really kind of black-green uh, Soul Tide for some of this stuff. We do have stuff like Enlightened Tutor, Weathered Wayfair. Um, I think... Actually, we had red in here for Mina and Dean, but no, we have red in here for uh, Door to Nothingness. That's another way that we can take advantage. I was like, why do we have red mana in here? But uh, we'll see what we can draw into. And basically, you know, once we make all of our land drops, getting down something like Damia is a really good way for us to kind of refuel our hand. Uh, maybe we can get into something like Oracle or the uh, three mana dragon, not dragon, the dinosaur. Oh, what's his name? You get the city's blessing, you make an extra land drop. I can't remember what he I can see the art right now, but um, once we get that down, it allows us to make a few extra land drops and just really get some good stuff going uh, with Mazes in. Our opponent's tapping out for a pretty good chunk of mana. That's going to be five. That's going to be nine total mana. So let's see if they're going to get down. Okay, so they're going to go for final judgment. Exile all creatures. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so they have a very own, very own Merciless Eviction. That's going to get rid of uh, Damia. But we can still bounce back from it. Our, our main thing is Mazes End, so that's, uh, we can survive. Ooh, drawn the Vampiric Tutor, which is pretty good. Uh, let's go and get down Golgari Guildgate. Yeah, because we, what we can do is we can go for the Amulet of Vigor, which I think is exactly what we want to go for. So let's go and go for Chromatic Lantern. That's still going to keep us on for Mazes End. And we'll go for that activation. After that, we'll go for Amulet of Vigor and start making our land drops. I think that sounds pretty good. Yeah, let's do that. So we're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. And we could try to get down Eternal Witness for Merciless Eviction. But at this point right now, we're just going to hold up. And um, once we go for the Mazes in, that's going to go back to our hand. Because if we put it on top right now, uh, we shuffle our library. That's going to be a Wasted Vampiric Tutor. We definitely don't want to do that. I... <laughs> I have a tendency sometimes to get ahead of myself, so I'm making sure that we go for Mazes in first, and then we grab that Amulet of Vigor. Um, we could use Vampiric Tutor for Life from the Loam. That would be a great way for us to really spread, but with us having Eternal Witness, 
we can still use that Eternal Witness to grab Vampiric Tutor if we want to. Ooh, opponent's going to go for Aura Shards. Okay, so I think at this point, that's going to answer what we're going to grab off of Vamp Vampiric Tutor for sure, because we get down to Amulet of Vigor, uh, that's just simply going to be fodder for an Aura Shard. So we're definitely going to go for Life from the Loam uh, with Vampiric Tutor. In fact, let's go ahead and go for, let's go for Maze's End. And I think we might be able to... Yeah, we can still go with Chromatic Lantern, so we don't really have to take any damage off this one either. Now let's go ahead and get down Simic Guild Gate. Let's go ahead and add Black Tar Mana Pool. Let's go ahead and go for Vampiric Tutor. And if we want to, we could actually go forward, set up some good stuff. So we go for Route, and we can also go for Prime Time. Actually, let's go for Prime Time. I think I like that a little bit better. That's going to be an extra land on the battlefield. Yeah, I like it. Uh, so if you don't know, this is one versus one commander. Primetime is unbanned in one versus one commander. Um, these are the exact same ban list, except for a few cards here and there. And primetime is definitely one of those cards, but ooh. Primetime's some good magic. <laughs> I love it. Uh, let's go, and go for primetime. Uh, it's going to be green. And you can see how good it is in a deck like this. Uh, let's get down primetime. It's going to be one, two. Search our, li our library for two lane cards. Yes, we're definitely going to use this ability. And we're going to be pretty aggressive on this Eternal Witness. We could go for Dark Depths and Thespian Stage, but uh, we're on the Guildgate game plan. It's always fun to get a uh, Mazes in win. Let's go and grab Rakdos Guildgate. Oh, look at that. Let's go and get down Mazes in. It's going to come into play tap. Let's go and go for Eternal Witness on um, Vampiric Tutor. I'm going to pay green. And we had a pretty painful mana base, but thankfully you can see with stuff like Erdborg and Chromatic Lantern, that really allows us to kind of survive a painful mana base. Yes, we're definitely going to use that ability. So it re returns Vampiric Tutor back to our hand, and then we're going to go and pass the turn. So basically what we can do with Vampiric Tutor is we're going to grab Route. That's going to be two more lands on the battlefield, two more Guild Gates, and we're at one, two, three, four, five, six. We're at six lands at this point right now. Let me get my uh, pin out just to kind of double check. So we've got Selesnya. That's one. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. That's going to be six total gates on the battlefield at this point right now. And we swing in with Primeval Titan. Uh-oh. Punish drought ripping a bunch of lands. It's always a bummer. Uh, so we've got six, so we swing in with two. That's going to put it at eight guild gates. And um, we go for Vampiric Tutor on route. That's going to make it at ten. And so actually, I think we're going to be able to win next turn. Um, if I'm correct. Especially, well, if something happens to prime time, that'll stop us. But if we go for Vampiric Tutor. Oh. <laughs> All right, prime time got it on there. We'll put those on the bottom. Uh, we're going to have the Vampiric Tutor to shuffle them up. But uh, they got buried. Yeah, that would have been nice. But we can still go for the Mazes in activations. And uh, we're definitely going to go for Vampiric Tutor during our upkeep. Because that's going to be the best way to uh, get route going. Might be running into a counter spell, but if they've got it, they've got it. So we're going to go for Vampiric Tutor. Let's go and grab. Where are you? There we go. Let's go and grab Route. It's going to go on top of our library. Let's go for Circuitous Route. And that's one of the fun things about having Chromatic Lantern in a five color deck. You can just tap down for whatever you want. Let's go and grab Guild Gate. Let's go and grab a Guild Gate. Enter the battlefield tapped. And then that'll put us in a position to where we can grab a gate card. And still make the land drop. Let's go and get down Orzhov Guild Gate. Let's go and get down Mazes End. And then anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn. So, once again, let's get a Guild Gate count. This is going to be, sorry I keep counting. It's one of those, you know, I'm doing commentary. I don't want to miscount. And, because one of the worst things about playing a deck like this is forgetting, the, like you go for an activation or something. I don't know. So, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine. So we've got nine total guild gates. We go for one more mazes in activation. That's going to go back to our hand. It's going to come into play tapped. And then the following turn, we can uh, go for those last guild gates. I like that. And we might end up going for Ramos, uh, getting Ramos down too. We'll see our opponent's going to go for. Opponent's going to go for Primordial. Uh, enters the battlefield for each opponent, exile up to one target creature that player. Okay, good. I got worried that uh, Primordial was going to be able to exile a permanent. I was like, oh no, if they take mazes in, this. <laughs> This will be so bad. Um, they will end up hitting our Chromatic Lantern, but we've got so many gates on the battlefield that uh, we're in a pretty good spot, so it's not really going to matter. Uh, it's going to go for Mazes in. Uh, we're going to grab that last Guild Gate. That's going to be one, two, three. 
Let's go and grab a Boreal Skill Gate. That's gonna be all, all ten Guild Gates. We're gonna go ahead and get down mazes. In. All right, Potus gets scooped up. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't get the mazes in activation. But once we get down Boreal Skill Gate, we get down mazes in. Uh, they've got one card in the hand. Uh, that's gonna put us on next turn during our upkeep. We go for mazes in, return it to our hand. Um, story time. So the first time that I did mazes in, I thought it was just like a triggered ability. I thought like once you had ten Guild Gates on the battlefield, you won the game. And so I have all 10 guild gates on the battlefield, and I'm like, yeah, I'm doing commentary. I'm like, yeah, we got it. And then um, me and my opponent were just kind of sitting there staring at each other. Oh, this is over Magic Online, but we're staring at our desktop monitors or laptop monitors, and we're just kind of like, I'm like, why isn't why haven't I won yet? And I was like, oh, we have to go for an activated ability. <laughs> so anyway, if you're going to play Maze's End, it is an activated ability. So it comes into play tap this turn. Uh, once we untap next turn, we go for that activated ability. If we can control 10 or more gates with different names, you win the game. So good game. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get to see the actual activation, but we got all 10 give gates on the battlefield. That is definitely more than enough uh, to check the bingo sheet for Ramos Maze's End. So if you enjoyed your time in the maze and you didn't get lost, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.